Okay, so I want to tell you about the types of collisions um, that we studied for when we study momentum. Okay, there's um, three types of collisions. Um, the three types of collisions that we'll study are um, elastic collisions, completely inelastic collisions, and partially inelastic collisions. Almost all collisions fall into this third category, partially inelastic collisions. So let's talk about that. Uh, if you think about the word elastic, we say something's elastic if it can come back to form once you, once you compress it. And so that's what's happening with an elastic collision. Um, notice that this ball falls, hits the ground, that's T1, it's falling, it's got two joules of energy right here. It hits the ground and we're taking a snapshot, here's the same ball. Um, the, the instant that it stops moving down and is about to start moving up. So the ball is, comp is compressed. It's as compressed as it's going to be. Its velocity is stopped. And um, right now, all that energy is in the form of elastic potential energy. So the elastic potential energy right there is 2 joules. And um, when the ball regains its shape, if it comes all the way back up and has two joules at this part, then um, that's, that's, we say that that was an elastic collision because no energy was lost to thermal energy. No energy uh, was lost to the environment. That's called an elastic collision. And if you think about it, elastic just is referring to the fact that this ball is elastic. It's, it's bouncy. It, it restores back to its original form. Okay, that's as opposed to a completely inelastic collision. In a completely inelastic collision, here comes the ball. It's got um, two joules of kinetic energy. It's falling, hitting the ground. A little a time t two later, it hits the ground, and is this this might be like a, some clay. The first ball was like a super ball or something, and even super balls don't give you a complete uh, and you know a totally elastic collision. Um, there, there really is nothing that gives you a totally elastic collision. That would be weird. It'd be a ball that when you dropped it, it would fall on the ground and keep on bouncing back to the same height every single time. We just don't know anything like that, but we have things that are very close to that, so that's why we study them. Um, with a completely inelastic collision, see how this clay is not elastic? Once it gets squished, it doesn't return to its normal form. We say it's inelastic. It, it's not bouncy. It's not, it doesn't have any bounce back. And so at T3, it's still sitting down there. So where is the energy? It had two joules of energy here, and then it hit... And um, this isn't coming back. This is just going to stay like this. So the energy is in the form of thermal energy. In fact, um, the thermal energy of this system is 2 joules. It's got 2 joules more than it did beforehand. It's gained 2 joules of thermal energy. Okay, well, here's the deal then. For an elastic collision... Um, the following two things are true. The momentum before will equal the momentum after. That's because um, when object A pushes on object B, object B will push on object A. So those forces cancel out. And so there's no net force on the system. If there's no net force, then you can say this is the case. But not only that, we can also say that the kinetic energy before equals the kinetic energy after. As an example of an elastic collision, a cue ball striking um, a, another pool ball um, can can sometimes be pretty close to elastic if it's if it's a head-on collision with very little spin. Okay, um, a completely inelastic collision. A completely inelastic collision. The momentum equals the momentum prime. You still have momentum conservation, but you don't have kinetic energy conservation. Um, so you're gonna you're not gonna have as much kinetic energy here as here. The kinetic energy before is gonna be greater than the kinetic energy after. 
See how it diminished? One other thing, if it's a completely elastic collision, completely elastic, excuse me, inelastic collision, then the objects stick together. So if the objects stick together, then they have the same velocity after the collision. You know, two objects that are traveling along have the same velocity after the collision is the same as each other. They don't have the same velocity as before. What I mean is the, both objects both have the same velocity, whatever that velocity is. Okay, so that's a completely inelastic collision. That might be like um, uh, a football player going to tackle another football player and grabbing on. And in midair, they grab onto each other. Then the two of them combine to form one object, really, that is that is got the same velocity. Hey, for all other collisions, for all other collisions, P equals P prime if there's no net force on the system. Only, only if there's no net force in the system. But K doesn't equal K prime. You always lose some of the, the kinetic energy unless it's an elastic collision. But the other thing is, is that for all other collisions, the objects don't stick together. So when they do stick together, that's called a completely inelastic collision. Let me, let me give you an example. Okay, here's a 5 kilogram mass. It's moving at 2 meters per second. And a 4 kilogram mass moving the other way at 1 meter per second. They hit, they stick. And I'm going to tell you that these guys are going to go this way. This is the 5 kilograms and this is the one uh, the four kilograms now they stick together so this is a completely inelastic collision so how do you do this you say P equals P prime because the the net force is zero why because this put as much force on the four as the four put on the five so those cancel. And so now I'm going to just say um, 5 kilograms times 2 meters per second plus the momentum of the other one. Now this is where you got to be careful. Negatives are a big deal in, in momentum. 4 kilograms. And I'm not going to say that's 1 meter per second because that's negative 1 meter per second. Okay, afterwards they stick together. So if they stick together, I can put that as just one mass. In fact, that's like a 9 kilogram mass because they stick together times B prime. So I can now get that what that mass is. Let's see, um, this is 10 kilograms meters per second minus 4. So that's 6 kilograms meters per second. Yes, it is. Six kilograms meters per second is equal to nine kilograms times V prime. So V prime, if we solve for it, is about two thirds meters per second. And um, I got the direction wrong. This is a positive two thirds. So, yeah, I got this wrong. It's going this way. Get rid of these. If this were negative, it'd be going the other way. Oh yeah, that makes sense because this had more momentum originally than this. This is positive 10 kilograms meters per second that way. This is a, a negative 4 kilograms meters per second. So yeah, my total momentum was positive. <coughs> okay, now if I um, did the kinetic energies, I would find that uh, let's just take a look at that. We have a little more time. If I found the kinetic energy of this one before, so what is that? One half, one half five kilograms times two meters per second. So that'd be four meters squared over second squared. Plus this one before, that would be um, one half four kilograms times. Um, one meter per second squared, so we'll square that and you get that. If I added those up, um, I now now kinetic energies are only positive, so but you add them up, you'll see that it doesn't have the same energy as the other one, as the final.